they don't know how to solve it and they become angry maybe and they challenged with that. I have to, I have to try it in the app. I have to find out how to fix it, how, how to do that. Welcome to Mobile Heroes Uncensored Origin Stories. As we've mentioned before, this is a new sub-series for Mobile Heroes Uncensored. It is deeper dives with Mobile Heroes one-on-one, -on -one, or I guess two-on-one, pay because it's two of us and one of them. All superheroes, of course, have origin stories. Who are we talking to today? We do indeed, John. We have Daria Openasuk. She is Chief Marketing Officer at Impulse, which is, she's a mobile hero, but the app, right? just became the 20th most downloaded app in the U.S. So we've got a like, double bill. Impressive indeed. And Daria, you are impressive. You are our guest. Tell us a little bit about yourself first. Hi, Peggy, John. Happy to be here. Um, I'm from a small town in Western Ukraine. Um, when I was 23, I got two master's degree, degrees, uh, none in marketing. For some study <laughs> international business administration here in Ukraine and political science in Poland. Wow. And a quite funny story about how I became a marketer. Um, in, in 2015, I believe, I was working for an international FMCG company. I uh, worked directly with the founder, the owner of it, you know, my first real mentor. Uh, one day he came to me and asked, what do you think about marketing? About this industry, working in it? And I answered, no, nah, I'm not really fond of it. Why are you asking? He said, oh, I want to offer you a job. <laughs> so I tried <laughs> and, and I loved it. Now marketing makes me excited every day. I've spent quite a significant part of my life in marketing, both offline and online. Over the last seven years, I managed different businesses before finally landing in mobile marketing. I founded the most prospective and booming industry that gives a young professional uh, an opportunity to grow. Four years ago, I joined Impulse Team. Uh, there were only four, four of us when I joined, and I was only one marketer in project. Uh, since then, I led the Impulse uh, marketing team through the first release and soft launch to become one of the most downloaded apps in iOS apps in the US this July, and the most downloaded brain training app worldwide in 2021. Very it's cool. so impressive. It's amazing. Um, and I, I mean, like taking your first app and becoming that successful immediately. I mean, let's take a quick look at this app here, Peggy. The base of Pimples is user's cognitive health. It's an ability to clearly think and learn and remember. We use first personalized workout plans for different brain areas as well as science-inspired brain games and puzzles to improve users' cognitive skills. Cool. Very cool. So, I mean, we have to talk about the elephant in the room. And the elephant in the room right here is you launch an app and boom, it's, you know, top 20 in the U.S. This is not easy. This is, this is very, very challenging. This is something that people spend tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of dollars to do. And you've done it from the Ukraine with your first app in a non-traditional category. It's not a game. Um, it's not, you know, something in one of the super popular categories. It, well, it is a game, I guess, but it's educational as well. How'd you achieve that result? Well. Um, when you face stalemate situation, like with the idea of paid education, all you can do is to start from scratch. So we test different types of campaigns, different campaign optimization, creative types, funeral approaches, and found web conversion campaigns profitable. So we start, we started to work on that, to test this campaign deeper, to launch a web campaign. And still you lead user to the app store, you need a web link between uh, the app store and the ad network. So talk us through, how does that work? Um, what's the user flow? Where does the user see an ad initially and how do they get to your app? To launch a web campaign, uh, but still lead users to the app store, you need a web link in the middle of the app store and that network. Uh, it's web to app flow. I believe it's quite similar to the approach in the Lexi Gucci talked about in his podcast. Mm -hmm. The user path become longer, but we evaluate this as a priceless opportunity to warm them up. 
The main mm-hmm. advantage with uh, conversion campaigns or SCAD conversion campaigns, SCAD network campaigns, is the ability to test and scale quickly. But at the same time, you won't have this um, at network algorithm optimization for the final funeral event. To get around it, we use web conversion campaigns to test and SCAD network campaigns to scale profitable creatives. I love it. So just to, just so I, I'm sure that I understand that use the web campaign, which can be quick there, there, you, you control all the aspects of that can also be fairly inexpensive to find out what creative really resonated. And then you used SK ad network campaigns to make them scale. That's right. Very cool. Very cool. That's excellent because it's also a shopping experience or an engagement experience where you come in and then it's reinforced in the shop and then you go off and you clinch the deal to download the app. So in a way it's almost reinforcing the brand, reinforcing the messaging. It doesn't seem like you're taking me anywhere different. It seems like you're just deepening it. So it's a very smart approach. So you're using web app flows, which is very smart. You're creating this journey as I discussed, but of course, uh, There are some clouds on the horizon. There are some changes, you know, iOS 15, private relay. How do you think this will impact what you're doing? Oh, it definitely can cause a problem. But we should remember that it will only apply when a user is an iCloud subscriber and has private relay enabled. Now it's um, uh, off by default. It means that only a part of our traffic is under risk now. Of course, everything for this feature on all iCloud users. We should keep it under the radar and stay flexible. Mm-hmm. And if the world won't stop with that, we will still have some time to find out a new strategy that will work together with privacy. Yeah, you came up with a very creative strategy already right now. I'm, sh- I'm sure you will in the future. Let's talk about the creative. You have some amazing creative. The creative that you tested uh, cheaply and quickly on the web and then transferred two SK ad network campaigns. Tell us a little bit about your creative. They say you are smart. Are you as smart as me? Can you solve it? I bet you can't. Ha 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 ha. I know the answer. Daria, I have to ask, is it actually solvable? Is it possible to you? No. No, it's no. not it? No. That's horrible. But now I feel better. <laughs> I was wondering, I was looking at that. I, I don't know how I could not lift up my pen and not retrace and still cover all that. Oh man. Well, I feel better that I, I you're right, Peg. I feel better. I, I'm not a total idiot. <laughs> but it works see john it got us it got us interested it has us thinking you know it it ticks all the boxes yeah um we use puzzles that we have in our app but in that we we have solvable puzzles uh, okay such creatives, <laughs> such creatives have much better response from the audience in comparison to classic gameplay creatives they have better sitting around and show excellent install to trial conversion we challenge users with messages in the video and push them to download the app put it some social validation in descriptions. For example, communicating about Apple's awards or number of users that have already tried in those games. You know, I want to sit on this for half a second, Peggy, because it's really interesting to me because I'm recently in the, you know, kind of one mobile game that I play. I'm being targeted with ads for Ebony which has some similar puzzles. It's a game. You have to complete some puzzles to rescue the hero or let the hero get the gold or something like that. And the ones in their app, um, in their ads, are easy, simple. Anyone could do them. But yours were impossible. And I wonder if one of the elements of winning creative is something that totally infuriates the user. I don't know. People just don't, they, yeah, they don't know how to solve it and they become angry. Maybe and they challenged with that. I have to, I have to try it in the app. I have to find out how to fix it, how, how to do that. 
Yeah. Very cool. And they, they stay with us. They play these games for quite a long period of time. We've had good retention. Nice. That's really interesting. It's one of those player types, you know, there are like five or six player types that you're supposed to yeah. segment to. And you've obviously got the one that's like the diehard, I will not give up. But once you get them, hey, they won't leave either, right? So yes, you do have that psychopath meter. <laughs> so we do a follow-up, John, how to segment to psychopaths. No, I and I, no, let's not do that one. <laughs> let's talk about more Daria. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But speaking about you, Daria, because it is interesting, not only are you the CMO behind creatives that have really got us going right now and really thinking, but as a person, you're also very creative and you're also doing a lot. You know, in lockdown, we played a lot of these games and puzzles, and that was good for the app, obviously. What about you? What did you do in lockdown? What did you do in your downtime? You know, I split my time between some activities. Of course, my family, my husband, and son are the most important part of my life. But also I participate in uh, the Harvard Kennedy School Initiative. Uh, this school is a part of Harvard University and it has women network all around the world, Ukraine journey this year. Uh, it's some kind of mentoring program for female leaders in Ukraine. And I took part in, uh, I took part in it as a mentee of the amazing professional that works in the Ukrainian government. Uh, last two weeks I was working on lift up materials <laughs> and usually I spend four or five hours per week for or, uh, learning English. Wow. Very, very impressive. Very cool stuff. Now you've been super successful. Your app has been super successful. Uh, what's your top tip to app marketers who haven't been able to get to top 20 most downloaded apps in the U S? I believe it's don't be afraid of failures. You will face it much more often than success in mobile marketing. You shouldn't be demotivated by them. Learn from them. So your next test will become better and green high robots. Fail often, fail fast, but always fail forward. Interesting. I love it. And I guess, you know what, also fail on the web when, when you're failing cheaply. <laughs> then when you're spending. <laughs> He's going to let it right. <laughs> yeah. it, is a, it is a very smart approach. And then that's what you can do, 50 creatives and more a day and pick the winning one. Um, obviously, marketing prowess, marketing savvy that you have there. What about marketing news? The final question to you, how do you keep up with everything out there? Keep fresh, stay abreast of every, every development, including with Apple, that you have to keep up on? Um, usually I read the crunch, mobile the memo, the exchanger, and blogs of ad networks and MMPs like Liftoff, AppSplier, or Iron Source. Uh, I'm a member of, of some professional Slack channels. Uh, I can advise mobile dev memo, mobile heroes, uh, mobile attribution, privacy, etc. Um, listen to podcasts like Liftoff Uncensored, the mobile user position show, or, yeah. Sub club and attend mobile marketing conferences such as Abro Summit. I love it, John. Everyone listens to our podcast. It's one of the must. It's one everybody of the must. We talk to. We just talk to everybody in the world. Everyone would listen to our podcast. It'd be amazing. <laughs> That's it. We're just going one by one all the way through the mobile heroes. We have an army of advocates. Mm -hmm. Dari, it was great to have you here. Th so thank you, first of all, so much for sharing how you became a top grossing app. That's always very cool, but also some great tips for marketers who aren't quite there yet. So just great to have you today. Thank you. Thank you for your time to you. It's a pleasure to be a part of the Mobile Heroes community. There you go. Another fan, John. <laughs> Wonderful. They keep coming. So we do interview all the mobile heroes and there are over 100 of them and one coming every two weeks, John. So it's going to be a long, long year ahead, ton of them coming. And if you are a mobile hero, well, you're going to end up on the show with John and myself. And if you want to become one, well, here's how. Excellent. And thank you so much for being on the show with us today. This has been Mobile Heroes Uncensored Origin Stories with Daria at Impulse. Have a wonderful day.